By supporting our channel you support legal content on YouTube. Subscribe, click the bell and leave a like. We wish you a pleasant viewing. Palm oak forests have an ever-changing appearance. They are both mutable and at the same time stable and safe. They may grasp onto cliffs at the sea's edge, blanket mountains, or cover rough dryland plains. These evergreen oak woodlands can be quite different from each other. Some are dense and impenetrable forests, hidden sanctuaries for furtive animals. Others are spacious with impressive trees that have large leaves and superb, imposing branches. And all around the Holm Oaks, a fascinating, rich world flourishes, displaying a unique diversity unfound anywhere else on the planet. Holm Oaks are, in more ways than one, the very symbol, the perfect representation of the Mediterranean forest. The Mediterranean ecosystem is found in a number of parts of the planet quite distant from each other. South Africa, California, and Australia. But it is seen in its maximum splendor around the Mediterranean Sea, and more specifically in Andalusia. The best preserved and most extensive home oak forest in the world grows in inland Andalusia. Home oaks are able to grow in very different environments, but they are characterized by their ability stoically to withstand widely changing climates, freezing winters and fiercely hot summers. This forest is the backdrop of a unique ecology, home to a diverse and rich fauna with which it shares the rigors of the Mediterranean climate. Holm oak woodlands shelter dozens of species of animals that at different times of the year make various uses of these hospitable and generous trees. Among their thick branches, their leaves, their trunks and their roots, a complex network of beings are bound together in their incredible variety. From the strange worm lizards that frequent the subsoil to large deer that hide in the scrub. In its shadows, a rich undergrowth that enriches the forest and multiplies its capacity to generate life grows. The most representative species of the Mediterranean ecosystem, such as black vultures and the Iberian lynx, are bound together in and around the Holm Oaks. It's winter. And embraced by the mist, the Holm Oak Forest seems like an echo of itself. 
At night, some areas may drop to 15 below zero. But the holm oaks resist. Their tough leaves have not suffered any damage. And as the sun timidly warms the forest, life is hurriedly shaken awake. These cranes have traveled 3,000 kilometers from the north to spend the winter here, away from the boreal ice and snow. At dawn, they come together in enormous flocks and fly off to find meadowland. Meadows are a kind of cultivated forest with a mix of trees, grasses and crops. This open woodland occupies extensive territories in the southern half of mainland Spain, where the evergreen holm oak is protagonist. The reason for the crane's early morning flight is simple. From when they arrive at the end of October, they are in constant search for acorns to replenish their energies after their strenuous journey. The meadows will be their home for almost half a year. In the first few months of winter, they will eat almost nothing but acorns. And they're not alone. Hundreds of thousands of wood pigeons visit the same meadows. The pigeons can swallow the acorns whole, but they find it more agreeable to collect and digest what the cranes leave behind. The holm oak woodland not only provides food, the hard wood of a trunk stores water to quench someone's thirst. Jackdaws, small old world crows, also collect the acorns. But they cannot swallow them and must peck at the tough outer casing before reaching its sweet and nutritious fruit inside. A good acorn harvest is a boon to life in and around the holm oaks. Millions of creatures depend on them, from the cranes, the tallest birds on the continent, down to the tiniest of voles. One hectare of oak meadow may produce up to 800 kilos of acorns, received like the biblical manna from heaven by travelers and locals alike. As spring approaches, the crane's wanderlust begins to pull them northward again. But while they're still in the meadow, the first leaps, shouts and squabbles announce the start of the mating season. In the last of the mists that ebb and flow, hiding, then unveiling the holm oak forest, in addition to the cries of the cranes, the purr of the Iberian lynx, the scarcest feline on the planet, can be heard. These Andalusian forests are all that are left of its devastated kingdom. Now, at the end of winter, they feel the call to reproduce. If they pair now, their offspring will be born in the middle of spring.
This is one of the few pairs of lynx that survives in the wild. They will stay together for a few weeks while they're in heat, then each will go its separate way. Spring comes early to Andalusia. In February or March, the forest begins to bloom, and birds take advantage of the bonanza to make the first nests. Blackbirds are always the first to set about the task of breeding. Before the end of March, they will already have raised their first chicks. The blackbirds are soon followed by other species. Nuthatch make the most of recesses in the tree trunks to nest. They scamper around the branches, hunting all kinds of insects with which to satisfy their hungry offspring. And their conscientious hunting labors clean the old oaks of many parasites. Spotless starlings also nest in holes of the oaks, some of which may be up to a thousand years old. The trunks and branches of the oaks are like a large tenement block or a dormitory town where dozens of species take shelter and reproduce. The branches of the great oak also provide excellent scaffolding for the nests of Iberian or azure-winged magpies. The home oaks of the southwest peninsula are the preferred home of these elegant crows, which have filled the trees with the new generation of offspring. It's not unusual for several members of the clan to join the parents in bringing up baby. But all these nests pale into insignificance when compared with that of another neighbor in the meadow. The black vulture's nest can weigh several hundred kilos and reach four meters in diameter. In its spacious interior, the pair's recently hatched only chick. This as yet small and defenseless creature will occupy all the efforts of its parents in the coming months. The Mediterranean forests of the Iberian Peninsula are home to the largest and best preserved population of black vultures in the world. The vulture chick was born in an oak tree, below which there extends a varied woodland, rich in plant species, rock rose, strawberry trees, and a myriad of shrubs and plants that bloom and produce aromas protected from the heat and dryness by their resins. Among the many endemic species of the region, the oscillated lizard lurks. The oscillated lizard is the largest European lizard, reaching more than 70 centimeters in length. It's a voracious reptile and an inexhaustible hunter. Its most common prey are the large insects of the Mediterranean ecosystem.
very close by, wild boar have recently given birth. And after just one week, the piglets are following their mother around the woodland. For several months, the sow will suckle her babies. But wild piglets are very curious and active and will even find their own food in the forest. This little one tries a mouth-watering acorn, but it's its first, and it's not as easy as it looks. The wild boar's infancy is the most vulnerable time of their life. They may become victims of several predators, such as the lynx. The lynx is well adapted to the Mediterranean climate and habitats. Dense wild forests or isolated and spacious meadows enclosed by encroaching mountains. Thanks to the best preserved holm oak forest in Andalusia, the most extensive and dense in the Mediterranean basin, the lynx has been able to survive, hunting its favorite prey, the rabbit. Iberian lynx depend entirely on rabbits. In fact, it's the only carnivorous mammal so exclusively specialized in hunting rabbits. Its population is only viable where the density of rabbits is sufficiently high, as they represent between 80 and 90% of the feline's diet. Rabbits are also important for the black vultures. These are the largest predators in Europe, with a wingspan of nearly three meters. And they soar over the holm oak woodland, looking for carrion of all kinds, including rabbits. At the end of the day, the chicks need to eat. Food may be found anywhere and in any form, and that includes animals as large and dangerous as bulls, which live in the large home oak meadows. This wooded landscape is shared by both livestock and wild fauna, and the black vultures know how to make the most of it. Hedgehogs, in principle, are not on the black vultures menu. live very comfortably in these woods, hiding among the trunks of dead oaks during the day. Then at dusk, they venture forth in search of insects and small vertebrates, including snakes. At this time of year, with summer ever nearer, the holm oak forest gets a little drier with each day that passes. Just like the black vulture chicks, the lynx cubs are two months old and are still completely dependent on their mother. It's the time for refining their senses and reflexes. These games enable them to develop their predatory skills. Even at this young age, they accompany their mother on her hunting expeditions. At their own end of the scale, magpies are as good hunters as the big cats.
The days are now hot, and so at dawn and dusk, groups of magpies go out in search of food. They catch a huge number of insects. The holm oak wood begins to suffer under the relentless Mediterranean summer. In the middle of the day, temperatures can reach 40 degrees Celsius. The vulture chick can neither escape nor hide. Only the unconditional dedication of its parents, shielding it from the sun with their wings, allows it to survive. Sometimes, though, the survival of young vultures doesn't depend on their parents. Mediterranean forests are no stranger to fire. Some species of plants, in fact, are pyrophytes and can only disperse their seeds successfully when the fire burns. The black vulture's young, however, are helpless in their nests when the fire advances. Far away in another part of the old oak forest, the parent vultures are unaware of the danger threatening their offspring. They're focused on looking for what they need. But it's not easy to find enough meat to survive. Food is scarce and diners numerous and hungry. The tension erupts in violent disputes. But the black vultures' size and strength allow them to impose their superiority over other scavengers. Once the danger of fire has passed and the fight's over food won, the vulture chick can fill its stomach again. In only a few weeks, it may be flying over the holm oak wood in which it was born. Below its nest among the branches, the acorns have germinated and the forest floor takes on a healthy aspect. The return of the clouds announces the arrival of autumn, and the oak forest vibrates with a new sound. Rutting deer in full voice, it's now time for their mating season. Males gather their harems and defend them against rivals in ferocious confrontations.
It's an exhausting time, and energies are replaced thanks to the acorns. The deer need to eat so many that they will even harvest them by thrashing the branches with their antlers. As temperatures drop, a new set of neighbors takes up residence in the oak forest. Black kites migrate to the African continent, surrendering their homes to red kites. They will spend the whole winter among the welcoming branches of the Mediterranean forest. Mature acorns fall once again. And the fauna of the oak forest will survive despite the lack of food and the extreme cold. The bellowing of the deer has died away, soon to be replaced by the fanfares of the cranes back from their sojourn in the far north. Here they will spend half a year in the company of lynx, magpies and black vultures. the unique protagonists of one of the richest and most diverse forests on the planet. Thank you for watching. If you liked the video, subscribe to the channel, leave a like and comment. Support legal content on YouTube.